Hey everybody, it's Missy. Thanks for joining me again today. I'm back with a new page. This is for the Paige Evans design team. And I'm really excited about this layout because it's my very first one with the brand new Turn the Page collection. It has got so many fun patterns, beautiful colors. There are 24 double-sided pattern papers and they are just beautiful. So many fun patterns. There's a booklet of washi tape. There's alpha thickers. There's chipboard stickers. There's a container of ribbon over there on the right. You get the die cut ephemera pack. Sequins. They're so, so cute. Love those. These are really big dimensional paper clips. Puffy stickers, stamps, sticker book. The sticker book's got clear stickers. It's got alphas. And then there's also a package of like uh, cardstock tags just so much to choose from and th there's more of it that I don't even have yet so um, I know there's probably a six by six paper pad there's some tiny two by two paper pads all kinds of fun stuff so anyway my theme for this week is at an angle and so I found this cut file it's from the just nick store and I fixed it to where it took up a diagonal design on my layout and it took half of the page so I've got angles within the big diagonal angle and I cut it on some white cardstock and I just showed you really fast the pictures that I'm going to use. I've got lots of pink in them and they're a perfect match to this collection and I'm just going to go through the papers here and choose some that are going to match my pictures to put behind the open spots of all those squares or diamonds depending on how you look at it. And I use some that are more of a solid, and then I use some that have a pattern. And this is a technique, I know a lot of people do this. It's super easy, a lot of fun. It's one of my favorite things to do. And it's just cut pattern papers and attach it behind an open cut file. You can use tape, you can use glue, however you wanna do it. I like to try to, uh, well, I guess it depends on the shape. This one's a pretty easy shape. I'm just going to try to mark where I want the uh, pattern to show through with my pencil and then just cut a square. Sometimes I'll just stick it right onto the paper and then cut around it after I've glued, glued it down. But it just depends on how intricate the design is. This one was pretty easy. and I'm not going to make you watch every single one because you kind of get the gist of what I'm doing here. But I'm just trying to make it really colorful and you know, like I said, have some some solid, well not completely solid, but like the, the blue and the pink, it's more of a solid than say that paper with the butterflies on it. And I just want it to be bright and colorful and then I'm going to leave the bottom half of the layout white so I can add some watercolor to it. So I have it all backed. I think that's really, really pretty. I love that it's subtle yet it's also bright. And encompasses all the colors in the collection. So this is some clear gesso. I'm just going to smudge down with my finger over the white, the white space of the cardstock there. And then I'm going to use a little bit of white gesso on top of this part just so I can white a little bit of it out just around the edges of where my picture is going to go. And this will allow me to add some watercolor on top of it and the paper is going to be protected and it's going to be uh, easier to blend and smudge. Really technical terms, smudge, right? But you know what I mean when I say smudge. So I'm going to do what I always do and that is use some plastic packaging and some shimmers. And I'm mixing and matching two different colors here to make sure that I get just the right color. And I'm going with blue first since there's so much pink in my photos. I like to have colors contrasting where I can so where it's not just pink overload. And I'm uh, mixing and matching two different yellow shades here again to get just the right shade. And you could spray directly onto your paper, you could use a brush. I just love how the, the packaging, just the shape that you get when you smudge it down versus using a brush. 
So I added a little bit of pink over to the right, but I am going to be adding embellishments, and so I didn't want too much pink since there's a lot in the picture. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of shading here with a gelato. I've got a light pink and then kind of a deep reddish color. I'm just going to add a smudge of red, a smidgen of red to smudge it down. Smidging, smudging, yeah, all kinds of technical terms today. And now I'm just going to play around with some of the embellishments here. The florals are really pretty. There's really so much to choose from. I had a hard time trying to narrow down what to use. And so I had it all scattered around on my desk. And I was like going for the chipboard, going for the ephemera, back and forth. And then I would look at the puffy stickers and look at uh, everything. And just I wanted to <laughs> just dump it all onto the page. But you know how that goes. So I decided that when I hit a roadblock of, I'm not sure where to go next, I just take it all off and I go ahead and do my stitching. And I just use some white thread here and I'm just going to go around each square. And this is just going to add a very subtle bit of texture and I think it's just going to finish off that part of the page. It just makes it look finished, I think. Now you can kind of see it. I know it's white and it's very subtle, but you can see there where I stitched around it. And I like the effect that that gives. It just gives it a nice finished effect, I think. So now I'm going to come back to working on embellishing here. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of tissue paper. This is just random Christmas tissue paper from my stash. And it just gives a very subtle kind of crooked and torn border around the pictures. And then I'm going to use some of the same papers that I used to back the open spots with. And if you check the, um, the blog post on Paige Evans' blog, I'll have all the supplies listed, each paper that I used, because they're all numbered. I'll have them all listed so you'll know which ones that I used on this page. I'm going to do a little bit of a pattern paper layer behind each picture. Again, I didn't use pink around the pictures because she's wearing pink and I felt like the other colors sort of contrasted against that and made the pictures stand out a little bit more. And I didn't want to do too much embellishing on top of the cup file since it's so pretty and it, it sort of serves as a pattern paper back there. Now I do go for this paper here. It's got all kinds of speech bubbles with really fun sayings and I cut these two out. I only wind up using one and that's this one here. I believe it says go get that dream or something along that uh, those lines and I like how it looks up at the top and it's a really fun font. It's different. And these are just some cute pictures of my oldest daughter. She was just sitting on the couch one morning. She still had on her pajamas. And so, you know, it's not like a, a huge event that I'm scrapping. Most of the pages I scrap are just everyday pictures of my kids looking cute. And so um, I felt like I could use pretty much whatever on this layout since it wasn't a specific theme. I do fussy cut a few butterflies. There's a pattern paper that's full of gorgeous butterflies that were just begging to be cut out. And so I only cut out a few because like I said, I didn't want to go too crazy with the embellishing, but I'm going to cut out a small one and then the pink one there. And I like the fact that they're, uh, you know, as far as butterflies go, there's some on the pattern paper, there's some chipboard ones, there's some puffy ones, there's die cuts, you can just mix and match all kinds of butterflies and flowers and stars. There's all kinds of shapes, really. Um, it's not just a girly collection. There's plenty of things that you could use for a masculine layout as well. So I'm going to add in some thread. You know I love me some thread. And I'm going to use some coordinating colors just to kind of um, tuck in to the outside edges of the pictures or above and below it. And uh, kind of combine that with the embellishments just to add a little bit more texture and color.
I like how this is looking. I think the colors are so pretty and it it's always fun when I find pictures that match it really really well. Um, sometimes I'll print you know pictures in black and white but if I have pictures that match it perfectly then I'm gonna use those in color and this was a, a good set of pictures to use for this collection because I think it matches really nicely and it would have a different effect if I was using black and white pictures I think and I think that's always the case when you're making a layout a lot of times I think the pictures determine how everything's gonna look together so I decided I need a little more of that deeper reddish pink color and so I'm just gonna add a little bit more gelato in a couple areas the on the left and above the pictures here and because I added that gesso they smudge very very easily with my finger I didn't add any water or anything like that and it's a totally different look than using liquid so I'm gonna add a little bit more splatters and then um, get back to embellishing That's a little puffy sticker that I added up there at the top. No, it wasn't. That was a chipboard sticker. Now here come the puffy stickers. I use that one for now. I do wind up replacing it though here in just a minute. I think I used, I used fussy cut butterflies. I used chipboard and puffy sticker butterflies as well as a few clear stickers from the sticker book. There's so many fun words and uh, pretty gold, like it's almost like a matte gold. So there's plenty of things that you could use for ready-made titles. And the clear stickers are awesome. They, they look especially good on white, I think. So I took off that puppy sticker and I'm gonna use this beautiful flower die cut there. I like how that sticks out a little bit lower than that small puffy sticker. And then there's these little teeny tiny puffy flowers. They almost look like little confetti. So I'm going to use some of those just because they're so tiny and so cute. And I do wind up gluing those down just because I use the gesso. Gesso does not like to have things stuck to it. Now um, I'm going to use the word moments. That's from the ephemera pack. And then I'm going to finish the title off. It's going to be moments I love. And the I love is going to come from the sticker book. And you can see it there on the left. They're basically small and there's a floral print on them and they're perfect. And I'm going to wind up tracing over it. So it's going to stand out a little bit more here in just a few minutes. So that's a gold metallic pen because I think that that looks better than I didn't want to outline it in black since I don't really have any black going on in the layout and I like how that looks now you can really see those letters I add a couple of lines and I do use a black pen for my journaling and my pen sometimes does not work very well over gesso just because it's gritty but I just wrote really slowly and made it work. One of the last things I'm going to do is add some gold Heidi Swap Color Shine. And I do add the date and a little bit of white stitching down there underneath the journaling. But that's the final layout. I love how this turned out. This collection is so much fun. It is so pretty. Uh, so much to choose from. It's hard to pick where to start. Um, you know I love making girl layouts and it's perfect for that. But like I said, it's also... Uh, perfect for boys too. There are a lot of darker blues and greens and things like that to use for boy pages. So hopefully I will be able to give that a shot as well. But let me know if you have any questions about any of the products or the techniques or anything at all. Make sure you check out Paige's blog and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so, so much for watching and have a great weekend.